Hello everyone, welcome to Beaver's Hobby Channel. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I would build my WL Toys K989 or K969 to a budget brushless power drift car. This is an updated version for 2021. And all the parts I'm gonna use are the things that are available right now at the time of this recording. So I'm gonna have all the links in the description below. And if there is anything cheaper and better comes out, I'm gonna update it in the description as well. So let's get started. This is my touring car from my touring project and uh, I'm gonna convert it to a drift car. I'm keeping it all wheel drive so I can convert it back and forth between touring and drifting. So you're gonna see that I already have some upgrades on this car. The notable ones are the front and rear shock towers, aluminum shock towers. And all the knuckles are aluminum as well. And these are something that I already, uh, I always say that the aluminum upgrades are not that good on this car, except if you need, really need something to make the car stronger. These are the things you go to and not the upper lower arms and not the suspension arms because those will make the car wider and it is not a really good uh, sort of Y chassis as well because the dock bones are not going to reach the differential as well as uh, if you keep it standard width. Next, let's take a look at the electronics. As I said earlier, I'm gonna upgrade it to brushless system. And this surpass rocket is the best budget brushless motor. For drift car, I recommend 2500kV to 5500kV. And for touring car, I recommend 3500kV to 7500kV. The lower kV gives you more torque and better acceleration. It would work well in a small track. And the higher kV gives you more speed for a larger track or a track that has very long straight. I choose 3500kV for drift build because it is not too fast and it is still controllable. And I don't have a very big room so I don't need that much power. Next, the ELC. This is Dutch Micro ELC. And it is the best budget brushless sensorless ELC because it doesn't cock. By which I mean it doesn't stutter or struggling to get the car rolling. When you touch the throttle, it will start to run, albeit the starting speed is a little bit higher than the Atomic or GL ELC, but the throttle response and power feel the same. It also uses Hobby Wing program. However, you don't need to get a programming card because everything can be set with this button, just like the Hobbywing Easy Run series, and that will save you another ten to fifteen dollars. It doesn't come with the battery or the motor plug, so you'll need to solder them yourself. Uh, and you're gonna see that it has quite strange wiring arrangement. The first one is the motor. The next one is for battery. And the next one again is back to the motor. And this one is again for the battery. And the last one is for the motor. So you're gonna have motor, battery, motor, battery and motor, which is really strange. And please, do not get the surpass rocket combo. Even though the motor is good, the ESC is very bad, and it cocks like crazy. The power delivery is also really really bad. Get this Dutch Micro, it is much better, and the price is almost the same. Moving on to the servo, this is a Metal Gear servo for WL Toys and Mini-Q. Next is the radio and the receiver. In this build, I'm gonna use the RC4GSV2. 
But nowadays, you can find a good budget rail from something like $35 from Turbo Racing, so I'll have that in the description as well. And next, let's go over the mechanical parts that I'll be upgrading first. Because this is a drift car, so I'm gonna be using the front one way. This one is from uh, LK Racing that I got off the off AliExpress. The whole set is not the cheapest, but I think it is the best for the price. Because uh, if I can zoom in here, you're gonna see that the gear is made from plastic, which won't show up the pinion gear. And the spacing of the gear and the sharpness are really really good. So I'm sure that it is not going to destroy my car in the long run. And not just that, it is really really smooth. I, I don't think that I'll need uh, to lube it before putting it in the car. And to save the shipping cost, I also ordered the solid axle as well. And it is not really necessary to upgrade the solid axle because you can just lock the stock differential. So uh, I just got this because uh, it is not a lot more money. And again, if you are familiar with Mini Z, you're gonna uh, you're gonna spot something because these look really really like the original parts from Mini Z. So I have my suspicion that. This is actually from the same manufacturer, just different color. The wheels are from Mini Z all wheel drive. The offset depends on the body you choose. And because I used Chevrolet Camaro ZL1, the wheels are narrow with zero offset on all corners. You don't have to change the body, it's just, just uh, something I want to do. These drift tires are from Mini Z as well. These are the most optimal in terms of speed and control. They are also easy to find. You can practically find them in most Kyosho Mini Z dealers. I forgot to mention that we're gonna have to change the CVD as well because uh, these are shorter than the standard differential. So I'll be using this atomic. 10.5 millimeter universal shaft because uh, these are for Mini Z Y chassis and uh, there was something better if you want to use Mini Z differentials with WL toy as well but I don't think you can find this anymore they are labeled as 20 millimeter extended CVD for WL toys, but unfortunately, as far as I know, they don't sell it anymore. So I'm not going to use these shafts either because I want to show you the things that are available right now that you can buy. Finally, I'm gonna make the adjustable front toe as well. So I'm gonna use these mini Q adjustable linkages because they have 3.5 millimeter ball caps. And because the turnbuckles are too short for the below toys, I've got these rods from Alando micro crawler to replace, and hopefully they are long enough. So let's get to the build. First, uh, I'm gonna have to remove the wheels, remove the rear gearbox because uh, it is half disassembled. So I can just pull it out very easily and then I'm gonna pop the bow link. This is again okay, uh, this tool uh, everyone is asking what it is. It is the bow link plier from Align T-Rex 250 helicopter. As you can see, uh, when I have the 27 millimeter CVD, it is perfect when I use Mini Z differential, but it's not available anymore, and I'm not sure when it's gonna come back, so I'm not going to recommend this. And to remove these ball hairs from the rear, you're gonna need 1.5 millimeter hex screwdriver. The Pop 
the shock out and lift the cover. Oh, by the way, before you follow this tutorial, I highly recommend you to check out my WL Toys uh, Touring Car Project Episode 1 and Episode 2 because those are what you need to fix the car to work properly. And this differential, some of you are going to think that it, is, it looks uh, rather familiar because this is the differential from Atomic AMZ and it is really really good for touring car. So in the back, let's leave it like that for now, let's move on to the front. And because the front I still have the sort of normal differential, uh, I still use the standard CVD, standard dog bones that come with the car. Undo four screws. And this is the bone differential for the blow toys. It is quite filthy, so let me clean it. And because uh, to use and uh, I want to use the standard universal shaft or CVD with this car and I don't want to upgrade it to the long swing shaft to save a little bit of cost so I'll just tighten this up to make it a lock diff and if you have a standard diff that comes with the car you can also lock it as well by uh, taking it apart and then glue it in or put some paper inside to block the gear from moving is how I lock the diff. Now it is locked diff and I can put it back in the back but I uh, will do that later and next I'm going to install the motor so I can set all the gear mesh before putting the rear gearbox in. Oh the screw fell off and uh, that uh, that's quite all right I don't have to remove them. From the looks of it, I'm gonna have to replace this gear as well. Oh, that's a bummer. I thought I don't. <clears throat> Luckily, I already bought some spare. The gear that goes in the front doesn't have this uh, cut. Uh, I'm gonna have to zoom in to show you. This is the rear gear because it has a flap spot. So you can couple it with the spur gear. Like this. But the front pinion doesn't have that flap spot. And that's how you know which is the front and which is the rear gear. So it has a flap spot as well in the slide so if you put it in the right place you can slide it in very easily just like that don't forget the bearing and the front shaft is done okay so next let's move on to the motor Put it in like that first, and then see when the holes are aligned with this lot, just like that. So the screws are the M2 screw. Okay. Yes. Now it is. Perfect, I can slide it back and forth. 
So, let's put it on the car. First, put the shaft in. Oh, I almost forgot that I said I'm going to upgrade the servo as well. Let's pop this out. And before putting the servo in, you should recenter the servo, the new one. By power it up. And before you put the new servo in, you should center it before putting it on the car. To do this, you're gonna have to power it up. So I'm gonna put this on that. ESC goes to channel 2, the servo goes to channel 1. Uh, I hope this is correct, otherwise uh, we're going to have to switch it around. Oh, it has uh, gyro enabled, uh, I'm going to have to shut it down. One, two, three, three clicks. That's it. So now the servo is centered and I can put the horn in. Try and put the horn in so it goes straight up. It is going to make it easier when you want to center the servo. Where you wanna center the steering? Now, next, let's put this on the car. Uh, the reason that I'll need the this bar are because I want some tow out on my car and. The standard parts are not adjustable, so I'm gonna pop these out. And then I think, oh, it is bent from delivery, I guess. It's not good but anyway i think one of the arms is okay because uh, the long one i can use it for steering but the short one is going to need the yeah i think i, I think this one is okay for steering okay so Hey, this one seems all right. So I can probably use the long arm. But I'm gonna have to make it a little bit shorter. Next, let's make a tie rod that will have toe out so the original bar is this long i'm gonna have I'm gonna need something a little bit shorter than that and that should do all right hmm this one looks promising so i'm gonna use the ball cap from mini q with the rod from orlando and to have toe out this uh, this rod is going to be shorter than the original one and by the looks of it this rod will do nicely okay so i think i'm gonna have to tap this luckily i recently bought a very good set of tools so 
inside this we have m1.4 and 1.2 i guess it is m1.2 but let's see is it hmm. i think i'm gonna try m1.1 first and if that doesn't work i'm gonna move on to m1.2 It looks really similar to M1.1, so let's try that out first. Okay, it seems like it is going in, but okay, yes, M1.1 it is. And that is my new tie rod, which will introduce some tow out to this car. Let's put it on the car and see how it looks. If the tow out isn't that much, I'll keep adjusting it until it is what I want. Okay. It doesn't look like much, but I think it is exactly what I need. So, moving on to the servo. Next, put the motor with the drive shaft on it. Screw the motor down. Seems to be smooth. So, next, Let's put hmm, this rod is probably too long because let's try and power the car up at this state. So I know that uh, the steering is uh, pointing in the center. Hmm. Okay, the rod is too long. It is supposed to be much, much shorter than this one. Otherwise, it is going to be veering to the right. Anyway, let's uh, try and put it in the short one and see if I can do anything with it. Is it all right? one is a tad too short well I come to fix that later for now let's move on next I'll install the front one way on the front let's see if I can put it in right away without any shims well uh, I'd also provide some shims with the one way but let's see if I don't <laughs> Yep, it dropped in straight away. Doesn't need any shim. And now I can install the drive shaft. As I mentioned earlier, you're gonna have to upgrade it to the long universal shaft, 10.5 millimeter. Okay, now the front swing shafts. Lift it in, and it is perfect. Next, the other side.
Now I have a function in front one way. Moving on to the wheels. So I want to install the front wheels first. Have a feel with your finger if it is too tight. Okay, now it is all right. It should be able to move a little bit. Have uh, it. It shouldn't be too tight. You can feel it with your finger, and uh, if it is smooth, then it is all right. Just a little bit more. And this move as well. Now you're gonna see that I have a little bit of toe out at the front. And this will make the car turn in a little bit more aggressive. And uh, because it was touring setup, I have the front springs. And this is the spring from Mini Z all wheel drive, a DWS kit. Uh, it is a medium spring and it is a little bit stiffer than the below toy standard spring so if i remove the clip it is going to be very very soft and i can put it at the front and the other side as well very soft springs at the front now moving on to the back before we go any further i'll put the rear gear in this one is a modified gear that i made uh, in my touring car series and it is still holding up quite well here's how to do it put it in like this turn it around and you'll fill the notch then you can push it in and next the motor i'm gonna change the pin and size as well i'm not going to be using the standard 17t but i'll be using something like a 12t to 15 uh, the standard is 17 right so i'll be using 12 if i can find it well i can't find a 12 but this one is a uh, 14t so anything under 15 is all right now let's put it on the motor a better way to do this is to take it out of the chassis again and then and then make sure that it sits firmly on a flat surface and push the motor in from the back now we have pinion on the car and screw the mount back so next Put the spur gear in, just like that. And then we're gonna need a strip of paper like this. So the idea is we put a strip of paper in there to set the gear mesh. Squeeze the motor to the spur and then screw it down. Now, pull the paper out. If it doesn't tear, it is alright. It is perfect. 
to now. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put the bearing in, so loosen these two and pull the gear out. Next, I'm gonna have to put the bearing in here before the spur gear. This is a correct one. This is a correct way. Pinion, bearing, and spur. And because the game mesh is all right already, we don't have to set it again. Now, the reason that I told you to loosen these two because we can lift the motor mount up a little bit so we can lift the bearing and put this one in like this once again lift this one up put the gearbox in at an angle and then lift the front up with to line the slot with the bearing and then push everything down and that's it you don't have to remove the water mount entirely just loosen it up a little bit Next, let's put this one in. Close the gearbox. And then, because it is still long, I can use the original CVD. And don't forget the shocks. And the wheels. Again, feel if you can spin freely, then it's all right. And the draft train upgrade is done. Now let's move on to the electronics. To mount the electronics. Uh, we're gonna have to put the top plate on first. This servo wire is very, very long, so I'm gonna have to curl it up or something. Clean the top plate first so we can stick the electronics down. And next, 
we're gonna have to connect the brushless ESC to the brushless motor uh, I should isolate the board before putting it on the car the tip should do all right well it shouldn't let the circuit board touch anything cover it all up like that take it down on the plate like that And next, when you plug the brushless sensorless in, this is only applied for sensorless. Uh, you don't have to worry about which wires go where because uh, it is sensorless, so uh, it doesn't have a sensor inside, so you can plug it in any order you want. If uh, it doesn't work, you're just gonna have to swap two wires, and that's pretty much it. Again, plug it in, plug this in before we go any further let's calibrate this esc by holding it uh, and turn it on now we're gonna have to tell it that it is the neutral point or the center point click once now pull the trigger click it again push the trigger to full reverse and click the Yes, again, and that's it. And let's see if it is forward. So, what you should get is forward, break, and then come back to center and reverse. And that's how a hobby grade car works. So, now that I locked out with that. Let's uh, tell you how I locked out. On the right, it is A. In the middle, it is B. And on the left, it is terminal C. I forgot to tell you that this ESC comes with the low voltage cutoff set to off as default. So, you're gonna have to set it. And I'll show you how to set it using this button only. Uh, but before that, I'll verify it with the programming card. So plug it in like this. Signal Y is on the bottom and turn it on. The cutoff is menu number three. The value is one because it is off. So now that we know it is off, let's go and set it with the button. And here's how to program it with this button. Hold the button and turn it on and keep holding it until you see the green light. Not yet. Here it is. One beep means uh, item number one, two means item number two, and now three means item number three. And, then it, and now it is four. One long beep is five. One long and one short is six. Seven. Eight. You'll see that I'm still holding it. And then you can let go of the button to the menu item you want. I want number three, so now it is. Now I let go of the button, and then it'll uh, and then it'll beep with the red light. This means uh, this item has value number one. Click it to increase the value. Now it is number two. Click it again. Number three. Click it again. It's number four, five, and then six. Now I can turn it off and the value is set. So let's verify it with the programming card. Here it is. 
and that's it that's how you program this ESC with just a button only so you don't have to buy the programming card you just need to hold the button and then click it to select the value you want let's put the receiver on the car we're gonna have to put this on the car in such a way that it doesn't interfere with the with the body so I can probably put it like so curl the receiver wire uh, the antenna like that and then stick it down here and it should be all right again use the double-sided tab And because this one is really long, I'm gonna curl it with a screwdriver. Just like that. And now I can plug it in. The bottom one is the channel one and next is channel two which is ESC the wires are a bit all over the place right now but this is a temporary setup so I'm leaving the wires long on purpose I think I'll have to make another video to show you how to properly manage the wires And I forgot to set the steering. Go to reverse from normal to reverse. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And I don't have a gyro enabled as well because uh, I don't need it. problem is now that I have to adjust this turn buckle so the center point is uh, pointing the car straight so now I'm gonna adjust this rod well if it is not too much I think I can still trim the steering and it won't lose too much sensitivity Thirty. That's not too bad. And I can set the EPA so it turn more. And I can set it to just about hitting the shop. That one can still go a little bit more. Good. I'm 
and let's put the body on to see how it looks. How about that? Let's take it out for a spin. In conclusion, what's the difference between this and my previous build? The ESC is much smaller and lighter, so the car is lighter than my previous build, and the weight difference is noticeable. The car is also lower, so it has better center of gravity. The new brushless system is also smooth and powerful. The servo is faster and more precise with better centering. Front one way and toe out make it easier to drift. Basically, it starts, stops, and steers better. And that's it for my new build. If you have any question, feel free to comment down below. Thanks for watching, and see you again next time.